Good morning, good morning, good morning, beautiful people. Good afternoon, good evening. No matter what time frame it is, just know this is the day that the Lord has made, and I'll rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> As always, God is good, and He is good all the time. Y'all, I am uh, mother freaking exhausted, but um, I had just went, you know, came home from the gym. I um, not it, seven months ago, I tore my ACL and my lateral meniscus. My ACL is completely uh, torn from what I was told from the MRI, and the uh, the lateral meniscus is like slightly torn. And um, so since then, I've been like taking it easy in the gym, you know what I'm saying? At least with like heavy weights because I don't work out my upper or my lower body as often as I do the upper. So I figured not lift too heavy, um, try to do more cardio, but for the most part, take it easy. So I've been, I've been chilling. I uh, just recently started getting back into the gym because, you know, the recovery that I've been working on, <clears throat> excuse me, for my, my need to build mobility and strength and all that wonderful jazz. Let me tell you, I came a long way, came a long way and I ain't getting no surgery. The most high God healed me and all I can do is give God praise and glory. I don't care what nobody says about it, you know, how anybody feels about it, how you feel about me. All I know is Jesus still loves me he is still accepts my praise and that's all right with me. Like, the rest of that stuff is for the birds. But uh, I've seen on live, um, I've seen on live, I watched a couple of lives because as I was leaving the gym, I noticed people started popping up on live and um, in the basketball community. <sighs> and this nigga. Logo Lock, a.k.a. I think his name is Mike some trash. I'm looking through my phone now because this dude, he's he's hella weird. He's hella weird. I don't know if any of y'all seen the, the Kenny Chow live and um, in the chat, there's this dude named Playboy. Something I forget what the freak Flacky or Flocky or something like that. But he has said that, you know, when people get a, a little bit of, you know, a taste of celebrity status of fame, they tend to switch up and act different. And that's exactly what happened with Logo Lock, right? So when I first started um, watching his YouTube, it literally was like maybe two months ago. And uh, this nigga, when I like started uh, watching him, he had like 100 subscribers. And so I would watch his videos periodically but I was always, you know, watching the live. So there was really like no, you know, too much point in watching his videos because it's redundant at this point, you know, especially because I'm watching it. <sighs> but I started feeling inclined to comment because I noticed that he's a, a Chris White cum guzzler. Like all he does is ride Chris White. He rides him to death. And then he does the same with Greg. And Anybody that says anything oppositional to these, you know, individuals, especially Chris White, this dude, he acts like he acts like he's there, like, you know, they, their girlfriend or something. It's just it's weird. It's weird. And I'm the dude's older than me, but he's the biggest like fanboy ever. And um, but I, you know, I felt inclined to comment because I'm like, what's the whole point of you posting stuff on, you know, on social media? And having the ability to, you know, receive comments from people and I not give my honest, you know, opinion on whatever that I'm commenting. And so, you know, from what I've seen, you know, what's accessible on YouTube, I've come to the conclusion that Chris White is a terrible person, just like everybody else. However, what really like irks me about him and there's nothing around it is the fact that this nigga culture appropriates like the whole point of cultural appropriation is it's not you paying homage to a culture the culture that he thinks he was raised up in when the niggas from Schenectady New York aka Albany you know what I'm saying it's not even listed as one of the biggest cities in New York State it's nothing like New York City in fact when he was a child 
the black population of Schenectady, New York was like almost non-existent. <laughs> this dude was like pushing 40. And currently the black population is barely 20%. So, <laughs> and this is 2022, but you know, this nigga, he's a troubled child. And that's the, the one thing about most niggas in poverty. Most niggas in poverty, you're going to live somewhat, you know, alongside black people. And when you look out into mainstream, you know, media, mainstream, you know, culture, black culture is just popular mainstream culture. It's, it's everywhere from music to the way we dress to our vernacular, you know, our colloquialism, everything about us, our hair, the styles, like everything 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 black people have been the leader through entertainment since motherfucking slaves that came here you know what i'm saying <laughs> like this is they brought people motherfucking here and enslaved them we've we've just we've been the life of the party always you know that's why even when stuff was segregated you had these what they call nigger lovers sneaking their ways into the black folks party the holes in the walls wanting to you know the juke joints wanting to mother freaking chill with black folk because we the coolest niggas on the block like that's just what it is this the skin color comes with coolness automatically <laughs> that's why the lamest nigga could you know say nigga and try to act street and speed the most suburban nigga nigga coming out his mouth sounds hella weird you know what i'm saying but it's because with the skin these features this look man the coolness is just natural so everybody wants to get on, you know, get in taste, especially because from outside looking in, black people seem to be the only people that can say any and everything, even the most racist, hurtful things to people. And yet. It's almost like we have the ability to do it and no one can say anything, because at the end of the day, we've been the, the butt of everybody jokes forever. Everybody oppresses us. I mean, it's crazy how. I remember in the 90s going, you know, into stores now in New York, majority of your hair stores and, you know, the convenience stores that people shop in, like even clothes stores, motherfucking corner stores or bodegas was ran by Asian people. And I remember these niggas motherfucking racially profiling me, walking across, you know, following me around the store and whatnot. Just weird, weird. You know what I'm saying? I don't be following them around and look what the freak trying to be doing out here, you know, just wreaking havoc on people. The hell of racist towards black people. But you don't see me ostracizing or treating Asian people terribly. I mean, a Korean woman shot a 14 year old girl to death in the 90s. Yeah. Shot her dead over orange juice and she wasn't even stealing it. She paid the lady and the lady still shot her dead because she viewed she still viewed a child as a threat because the lady wasn't taking all her yiggity yet. You know what I'm saying? But I don't, you don't see me out here treat, following them like they some other freaking criminal, Im, Im, you know, animals, immigrants, <laughs> but they do it to me. And the thing is, is that these same people want to swindle their way into our culture and be like, well, I can say nigga. The same thing with Latinos. I can say nigga because I've been oppressed by white people just like you. But the, the sad part about it is that even you racial minorities, even you oppressed my people, even you enslaved my people. I don't know any black people who own slaves in America and not necessarily known personally, not even through historical reading research of my own. I don't know one, but I've come across several tribes. I mean, for one, the largest Native American tribe to enslave black people were Cherokee, which, hmm, Makes a makes sense why so many black people out here talking about I'm Cherokee Indian. Yeah. Rape. Slave masters having sex with their slaves. Same thing white people did. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with Latinos. Everybody had a parts in that motherfucking slave trade and they were slave enslaving motherfucking Africans, Western Africans and all this. Nah, bro. But you don't see me out here, you know, wreaking havoc. <laughs> the thing is, is that I tell the truth and I speak the truth. Logo Lock from 773, AKA, that's what I was doing, pulling this weak nigga's name up. Mike some trash. Mike Lock Dastich Jr. Look at this. Michael Lock Dastich <laughs> Jr. D-A-S-T-Y-C-H. But then he want to sit here and say, nigga, what Latino last name is Dastich? 
What? Who's mother freaking white? Your mama? Because he, he gives me, I was raised by a single, you know, single mom vibe. He's so detached from the Latino side, the Mexican side, but he was raised on that white side. He gives me that vibe. Definitely does. The tryhards, the one to fit in so bad. This nigga, I used to tell him all the time, you can't say nigga. You're white and Mexican. Nowhere in there is there black. You always got those weirdos that want to come out and be like, well, Latinos are of African descent. Yes, of African descent is completely different than living the life of a black person. OK, because blackness is associated with one skin color. It's not your ethnicity. It's your skin color. That is why you have some black people who fit into white spaces because they can pass as white. Why? Because they have white features. They have white skin. See. I'm a criminal justice person, right? Social sciences, that's my thing. That's all I know, right? And I know that Jesus is coming back to save us all, you know? When it comes to criminal justice, data, research, you can motherfucking Google any peer review article in it to tell you. Racial bias exists, not only amongst police, but in the court system. Black people, not even just black people, let me say it for what it was. The darker your skin, so dark skinned people are more likely to be arrested, charged and convicted and punished more harshly than white people and white skinned people. Same thing when it comes to facial features. Those with Afrocentric facial features are more likely to be arrested, charged, excuse me, convicted and punished more harshly than those with European centric features. These are facts. Google, Google, Google them. <laughs> They're Googleable. <laughs> so this does a change. A white man with a criminal record is more likely to be hired on a job compared to a black man with no criminal record. So when people sit here and like, what you're racist towards white people, I'm not racist towards white people because I'm telling you the truth. OK, one racist is not me saying things to you that you view as mean and hurtful, which ultimately is the truth, because all I do when I talk to people, I say you're cultural appropriating. You can't say nigga because you're not black. You don't live the black experience. When people look at you, they don't see black. You you don't live the black life. OK, so black is not something you can claim because it's associated with one skin color, not your ethnicity, not your nationality. You know what I'm saying? Not your religion. Not your sexual preference, your skin color. And he get mad because I tell him, you culture appropriate. Your homie, well, it's not even his homie, the nigga that he mother freaking cock strokes, Chris White, he's a culture appropriator. Check my channel. I already posted a video because I know there's some ignorant people out here who do not know what cultural appropriation is, just like they do not know what racism is. I am incapable of being a racist. Incapable. Very capable of being a bigot you know, participate in the bigotry, I am very likely incapable of being prejudiced. Racist, I cannot be because I am born in the skin of a black woman, black and woman. I have no means, no power, no position, no status. And even if I did have wealth, I still society as for what we know it to exist now was not created for people who look like me, females and black. Then when you throw queer in there, it's, it's, it's this world, this society wasn't created for people from, you know, like me. And it wasn't created by people like me. So at the end of the day, when I sit here and tell you, you can't say something, don't get pissy with me because you didn't like what I say. and want to call me racist. I'm not racist because I have no power to systemically oppress anybody. Not men, not children, not black, white, Asian. Nobody. I have no, the only power I have is, is within my reach. That's it. And even the feds, they could come in, grab my body, throw me, hold me, unlawfully arrest me. It's happened before. Which brings me to some content that will be coming out, I'm telling you. Because I'm a very, I'm a very open person with my life. And it's funny that, because you'll see in these comments logo, he tries to throw out stuff like it's hurting my feelings. He says, uh, he quick to run to that, the B-I-T-C-H word. 
And it's like, first off, I'm in Chris White's live, just like I'm always am. This nigga decided to come and comment to me, talking about some Tierra burner um, page or some crap. So I'm like, this ain't no burner page. Like, I've always came on his live with this page since he's blocked me. Like, this was before I even knew of your existence, Logo. Like, this... And then, if you look at my content, the antithetical antagonist logo is all throughout my stuff. So there's no hiding. There's no hiding. It's not like I'm out here, you know, creating what he calls burner accounts, troll accounts, just to be out here harassing people like I'm hiding behind. You know, it's me. There's no there's no hiding. Very open about mine. It's on all my content. My name is right up under everything that's attached to the antithetical antagonist. So you can't question who this is. My name on it. My name is in the mother freaking, the logo. <laughs> I don't need you mother freaking trying to. And then all he was doing was baiting me because he wanted me to say something to him so he could say something. Because now this is the B-I-T-C-H move. Now this is, this is proof that logo is a B-I-T-C-H. You can check my live. You can check my Instagram. You can check my mother freaking YouTube. What the freak ever. Okay. Well, not my live, but my YouTube and my Instagram. In my video, you see me when I, you know, show Garden Fat Boys live. I called him out for being, you know, he pop up in car, guard, you know, fat or guard the fat boys live, but he's not saying nothing. So then when he comes in, the nigga never says nigga. He don't even use any profanity. He was like trying to roast this dude named Miggy for wearing shades indoors. But that's a New York swag. Like every New Yorker, literally everyone throughout this mother freaking state wear shades in their house. It's, it's just what we do. But he came in there with his white dad jokes, trying to roast the dude for mother freaking wearing shades indoors. And I'm like, nigga, Guard the Fat Boy has shades on. He, oh, but I'm not referring to Guard. You can't make a joke that's applicable to other people. It's not a joke. Nigga don't even know how to roast. And then, I want my red wine. Then this nigga, I even called him out on it. I was like, oh, you be live on the white people's, you know, posts, but we're all that liveness while you in some some real niggas post. You in a live full of black people. Not one time did that nigga come out and say nigga. Why? Because he's a gringo. He's a white Mexican. It's a white boy. It's a freaking white boy. And what gets me is that this dude, and I'm going to show you right here. Show, actually, let me. So I'm about to show you. This nigga, like I said, talks crap to me only in lives that's ran by Chris White, Kenny, Cam. It's, they're not niggas. Ain't nothing scary or intimidating about it. Then, what gets me is that he says, I ain't scared of no, no niggas in New York. Talking hella spicy in a white dude's mother freaking life. But when he was in Guard the Fat Boy life, that nigga ain't say nothing. He literally only stayed, stood there long enough to collect a little bit of content to post it before me. And then he switched. He tries to push a narrative talking about guard the fat boy said he don't have a problem with mother freaking Chris. That is not what the nigga said. I was in that live right along with you. That's not what he said. He was pissed that Chris White's name was even brought up. Every time Chris White's name has been brought up. And this was before anything happened with Matt. He always was like, yo, what you bring that nigga up for? Don't bring that nigga up in this life, you know? And he always, always made that. But this nigga come trying to make it seem like fat boy on some apologetic way. No, that nigga ain't say nothing like that. But let me show y'all. Whatever they come with, we gonna bring it back. <laughs> we just gonna give it back to them. So this is his live and he responded to me about the stupid like burner thing. So I respond to him. I says, 
um, what did I say? I was like this, like burner account question mark. I was like, this is my account to spread knowledge. Like, you know, basically ain't no hiding behind it. Like, <laughs> and then first off, I thought you wasn't even talking to me because you talking about you blocked me or is that just on YouTube type of thing? So then he goes and talks some more junk, but I'm going to show you. So that's when I was like, he need his band of gringos to speak to real niggas was Hush and Guard the Fat Boy live. So then here go, you can see this nigga typing out B-I-T-C-H, I don't give a F. This you week, know, you know, We can settle it however they want to settle it. We're going to be in the hood in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to show you what he said. <laughs> Boom. Whatever they come with, we go. Then he goes and says, Oh, where, where's the B word before? Did he send it? We can just go and give it back to them, you know. We can settle it however they want to settle it. We're gonna... He said, I can speak anywhere, B. I don't give a F. New York niggas don't scare me. One bit. Talking hella spicy in some white boy's mother freaking post. You can go to the guard, the fat boy. It's literally, it's titled, it's titled with Logo's name in it because I was talking about how he was flipping the narrative. Lying on guard, the fat boy. Talking about he, he said he had no problem with Chris White. Just lying. You watch that. I called him out. Like, oh, you and guard, the fat boy is live. Why you ain't doing all that chit chat? Because he, he does this every single time I hop in one of these white boy lives or these whitewashed niggas lives, these gentrified niggas lives. He always want to mother freaking antagonize me. So when I say something, then these like, other little bandwagon, you know, penis writers, nah, nigga, hmm, see, homie don't do that weak junk, especially with no nigga, sitting here, you supposedly a scrotum carrying dude, but you sitting here talking reckless to me, a female, but then this nigga folds when dudes come for him, talking, wreck, calling me a B, then later on the nigga calls me a hoe. And violate that boy. I cannot believe these boys. That just tells you something, though. See, then I got this random dude who tags me right here, Griffin. Why do you hate him so much? Now, I have no idea who he's talking about. I don't know if he's talking about Logo or if he's talking about Chris White. I don't know who the hell is him because I wasn't really paying attention to the comments. Like, he said this B I T C H comment. I ain't even respond to it because I ain't even see the jump. Because after I said my whole piece about him, you know, needing his band of white people to mother freaking come for real niggas, I was done with this dude because I know what type of time he on. He just trolls for views. Like he want to seem tough on people's lives and stuff, but he blocked me from even react, like having saying, commenting or anything on his YouTube. Then when I message him on his Instagram, nigga, oh, he don't respond to me. But he talks spicy in these lives. B-I-T-C-H. Nigga, you the B-I-T-C-H. Like I keep telling you, your mama, instead of allowing your daddy to impregnate her, she should have swallowed that nut. Then I won't have to deal with you. That tells you something, bro. Then, here, tell then here he comes. It tells you how lit you are. All right? It tells you how lit you are when they picking up 610 dudes to try to guard me. I'm 6'6", six, six, bro. <laughs> hey, is that bald life breast ghost? <laughs> hey. Then he goes and say, she on the logo meet. Nigga don't even talk right. She on the logo meet, even though she a dyke. First off, this nigga was never even saying nothing about no meat until his interactions with me. Now he's... He's a Chris White, man. All these niggas do is motherfucking swag jack. <laughs> like, these, huh. Y'all some motherfucking losers and y'all grow up losers getting bullied and picked on all your lives and your nobodies and your motherfucking failures. <laughs> and then social media comes around and then you find out that y'all can paint whatever narrative, whatever picture y'all motherfucking want. And then you do, man, ain't got time for this. They're talking about something. I'm a dyke. Nigga, you won't even know my business if you wasn't always stalking my junk. Like, when I first interacted with this dude, he literally started following me. Then, I think after, like, a day, maybe, he, he unfollowed me. 
But this nigga was just going through all my stuff. And that all at the time, all I kept saying, because I kept calling him a skis and a little kid and all this other stuff. And he was just going through my stuff. And he wasn't really talking all that. He didn't start talking big until I think him and like Chris White came together in this like I hate Tierra crew. And then so now he's like, yeah, I got a partner that hates her just as much as I do. So now we control her together because Chris White be trolling me on fake pages, bro. And I only got like 60 subscribers <laughs> or not Facebook, but this nigga be trolling me on YouTube and I only got like 60 subscribers. And these niggas with thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of followers be so bothered by me and my little 60. <laughs> What's, up, What's guys? up, guys? I want... I want Right here, I'm taking you to it. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the video where he, he didn't say a word in the whole thing. He didn't say no niggas. He barely even spoke. He tried to roast one dude and it ended up looking stupid because his roast was like, oh, look at this dude. He wearing shades in, indoors. And then Garden Fat Boy was wearing shades indoors. Like the, the joke was just so weak. So weak. Just that white people joke. Like, <sighs> roasting ain't they, they culture. But this is what I said. Basically what I told y'all. Logo prevents me from commenting, you know, on his YouTube because I always call him out on his nonsense. He's a white Mexican. He claims one, Me he, he claims one of his parents is Mexican and the other one is white. And he doesn't like being told that he can't say nigga because it's not in his, you know, in his vocabulary because he's not black. I'm like, so I say, I mean, you see it. Being Latino doesn't make you black. I go in here and start, you know, explaining everything and going to depth. And the same thing I said about criminal records and such. Like, I'm always the type that, yeah, I have a, feel, you know, I feel how I feel with white people, but it's not like I just excuse me, made this junk up out of the, this is stuff that we go through. Like I go through stuff just because of the color of my skin. I'm not about to have somebody jack, you know, swag jacking me when he can just toss away that character, like a costume. I can't toss away my skin. This blackness follow me everywhere I go. Even if I didn't talk like this. The logo has greater chances passing as a white dude. He's half white. He's white and Mexican. And the nigga's pale. Fat too, but pale. <laughs> then here he goes. This is proof that he did it. Your comments don't show because your page is blocked on my channel. I did end up changing the title of the video because I thought Fat Boy said he don't got beef with Chris White when I watched it again. After posted it, I realized Fat Boy didn't even say that. Thanks for the views, though. You want to talk smack to me on people's lives, but then you prevent me from even talking on your mother freaking YouTube. But who's the BITCH, Michael? That's why I said this nigga, he's lame. This dude, I've been talking the same way when he had 100 subscribers. Now this nigga got 1.1 something. He blocks me. Or reports me as spam. And so I can't. <sighs> Weak niggas. But then you talk so much junk on these lives. Like this is just beyond me. Of. Oh my. This is. <laughs> I can't believe that you think this is just so dumb. Whatever they come with. We gonna bring it back. <laughs> we just gonna give it back to them. You know. We can settle it however they want to settle it. We're going to be in the hood in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> Boy. Boy. <laughs> boy. You and Tommy is going to fucking violate that boy. I ain't going to lie. Because as soon as Tommy get mad too, he start getting you, hitting you with the hard Italian fouls. <laughs> Yo, I cannot believe these boys, bro. Uh, imagine picking up a 6'10 Drew League guy to guard little old me. I'm lit, though. I ain't gonna lie. That, guy, that just tells you something, though. 
That tells you something, bro. It tells you how lit you are. All right? It tells you how lit you are when they picking up 6'10 dudes to try to guard me. <laughs> I'm 6'6, six, six, bro. <laughs> hey, is that ball's life breath goes? <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> what are you guys going to do? Get some buckets? <laughs> bro, I want... Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's just, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. This dude talks so much junk. Then why are you mad? Because I got me a woman and you ain't got one? Over here, cock riding mother freaking men. I mean, in this nigga's latest, well, I won't say his latest because he done uploaded some hooligan penis riding stuff, content, you know. But in his latest, I'll say, video posting on Kenny. Nigga is such a fanboy. Kenny is 27. Ryan the Crash Dummy is probably younger than, than mother freaking Kenny. Logo is older than me. I'm not even 30. I am 29. Logo is 31. And this nigga got screenshots. One of Kenny or one of Kenny and one of Ryan talking about how they started following him. How you a grown man happy that some niggas that's younger than you are following you? Mother freaking Doge fanboy. Such a doge. Such a doge. <sighs> but then wanna call me the dyke. Nigga, you you as gay as I am. Just as gay as I am. I was in those lives when you used to say suspect, you know, some sus stuff back to Kenny and mother freaking Cam. And you started switching up when you thought you, you was trying to piggyback off of Chris. Oh my goodness. This nigga talks so spicy from behind the computer. And all he says, I'm from Chicago, back of the arts. Nigga, where do you live? I live in Rochester, New York. Where do you live? I live in the Maplewood community. Nigga, where do you live is mine. Where do you live? You talk so tough. <laughs> so tough. But it's okay, because I know your name, Michael. <laughs> I just got to bust out that Cali Linux. Do my, little, do my little search and boom. Boom. Mike Das Stitcher. How the freak you call him? Mike Das Bit. <laughs> you can't change the name either. Because look, at, I'm in my pictures. Screenshot. You talk, you talk hefty. You talk spicy. Your words are, are, are as heavy as your mother freaking body. And I give you that. But you ain't really about that. You ain't really about that. <sighs> Nigga, I bet your mama's ovaries. Let me get a one, one on one with you. And it will get recorded. So the whole world can get to see you get slept by a black female 
who you call a dyke. You will get slept. <laughs> Nigga, I will even put money on the line up right along with your mama ovaries. You will get slept. Weak niggas. But it's all right, because I've been dealing with your type all, it feels like, all my life. Especially in the Marine Corps. Them, them puss niggas that talk hella hefty to females, but they book up when it comes to a dude in their presence. I got something for that tale. I got something for you. You best believe, baby. <laughs> you talk spicy. Let's reach out to King Sid. Shoot. I got a dude in my local hometown. His name is Black Bills. Kodak Black Bills. That nigga put on boxing matches. He got the gloves and everything. Sign the waiver, boy. And the, the world will see you get slept by a dyke black female. Man, it's just, it's so funny how tough people are through social media. It's hilarious. But y'all, I'm going to finish my blunt. I'm going to finish my red wine and I'm going to go take my bell, take my butt to bed. And uh, I love y'all. God bless. Don't believe the hype on social media. Niggas just do it as entertainment. Logos, little, little act. That's all it is. Little act. Nigga, you deserve an Oscar. <laughs> uh, if Twitter, motherfuckers, was a person, it would be Logo Lock from 773. God bless y'all.